Today's episode is one of the most requested things that has ever been requested in the history of the show. It's borderline harassment, but we're going to do it. Do guitar pedals work on bass? Only problem is, I wish I had a good bass player around here. Just don't have one. Just don't know what I'm... Yeah. Hey, Roy. Hey. He'll do. We are here and I have Roy, one of my favorite bass players ever. I, th I told you this, Pino Palladino, Carol Kay, Roy. He doesn't like me saying that, but it's true. From the band Mute Math, an incredible band that focuses so heavily on just the feeling and movement of drum and bass rhythm section and your bass playing is fantastic. So that's why you're here. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. It's amazing. Here's the question. This is where we have to start. Do normal, simple guitar pedals that don't say bass guitar pedal, do they work on bass guitar, especially even JHS pedals? Do they work on bass guitar? That's what we have to know. That's what the universe is asking, and the answer is absolutely. Absolutely yes. I'm excited to learn how. When I first met you, I believe, was at a sound check years and years ago, I remember walking up and seeing an old Morning Glory on your board, and in my brain, it, I, I never thought about using it on bass. How did you end up with this being the style pedal board that you use? Being kind of a guitar player first, like my first instrument, and then moving to bass, I never had this block of, just because it doesn't say bass on the pedal, I mean, I couldn't use it. There's which even none a of these G7 able... bass and you didn't. Yeah, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't use it. I have, I feel like, any guitar pedal can work for bass. It's just up to the player how they how they make it musical, how they make it sing, you know? And and vice versa too. I feel like guitarists can also use bass pedals that are that are marketed for bass in glorious ways. So the Morning Glory is a perfect example of that. Just became my my go-to pedal for for drives. So what's the hang-up? Why do bassists feel that we need bass pedals in the market? And and I think there are good bass pedals. If, mm -hmm. if we throw back to the live that you and I did a few weeks ago, we go into depth on this, but to simplify it, why do some people feel like they can't use guitar pedals? I think because a lot of them do cut out low end. So th that could be obviously an issue when you're, you know, you're wanting that low, but then you put on something like a drive, any drive for that matter, any fuzz, a lot of the times just the low ends just cut off. So to compensate for that, what I did was start just adding an EQ at the end and just boost back the low end and that solved that. So you just barely boost yeah. like 200, 100. Yep. Could you survive if you didn't have this? Does this, sell, does this sound okay? Yeah, it does, especially, well, it depends on the, the situation where you're playing. I feel if you don't have a good front of house uh, mixer or like it's a smaller club, Perhaps if you're putting this on and you leave it on, the the EQ on your amp, if you're if you're getting most of the boom and low end from your rig, you probably want to boost the low end on your rig. But if you're doing like a front of house DI situation, you know, yeah. like we were using here with the color box, you can either boost it on on the the EQ on the color box if that's what we're using, or just a plain DI and then use a. Um, a pedal or have your front of house guy just crank up the lows. My last question here before we get rolling with some sweet jams. Let's do it. Having spent a lot of time in the studio, engineering, being around records being made, understanding mixing and mastering process, I've always seen people purposely rolling off low end on everything yeah. because Clean up the if mix. everything has low end, it sounds really bad. So yeah. how does that play in the real world, having toured for decades, having recorded record after record? What does that look like in reality? It depends on the track and what's happening, I think, with the low end in general. Like what what kind of kick sound is the drummer using on the track? Are we are we doubling things with like, you know, a low bass synth as well? Or is the bass guitar taking more of that information, that low end information? where we would, you know, say we have a drive or something that we're using on the track, then 
uh, maybe we would just boost more of the low end on the bass and and carve out like the bass drum EQ sound to kind of match that. Maybe it has less lows or vice versa. Maybe the bass drum is is carrying a lot of that weight and the bass guitar becomes more mid-rangey, you know? We always combined um, a clean bass sound with something dirty, whether it was a pedal, whether it was a guitar amp. I mean, we've used the Vox uh, AC30. We've used um, other guitar amps mm -hmm. for bass to get the grit and just mix in there with usually like a clean, a like clean a DI. Parallel. Yeah. Okay. And it's, I don't know, it works nice. So Roy, what bass guitar are you using today? Describe that. It's like a like a thirteen string fretless or something. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, active pickups. No. Okay. Now I'm gonna use my um, tried and true P bass, seventy eight P bass with flat wounds on it. Okay. What about amplifier? No amp. We're just gonna use the uh, color box. All right. As kind of the you know kind of my amp, but yeah, just straight into so this that's after the pedal. Straight into Pro Tools. Pedal wise, I normally always have the Pulp and Peel on, and the Morning Glory, and uh, the EQ, the Boss EQ. I just change the settings according to what the feel of what we're gonna do is. I think for this um, next jam, I'm gonna focus on using the OC2 and uh, the, the Morning Glory kind of in conjunction where this is just, the setting I'll have on here is just that one octave up where that's probably what you'll hear more than anything. I do have a little bit of the direct sound in there which is just the normal bass sound. And then this is before it so I'm getting, I'm sorry, this is after it. So I'm getting some of the grit from here. I'm pushing this just to kind of get a, a this a dirtier kind of thing happening. And you're leaving this on. Yes, I'm gonna leave this on. Even though this covers some low end, I feel like just boosting back, probably I'll boost 200 a little bit more just to okay. just to kind of compensate a little bit. And, and the, the color box will be probably flat. So uh, that's your amplifier, direct in, using that as a preamp. Yes, and the, the comp will be more of the compression and less of the blend to kind of just yeah. squash it all a little bit. I don't, I'm not gonna mess with the EQ and no dirt. Play some riff rock, I guess. Let's do it. Something like that. That was that was pretty good. As v yeah, riffy, that one. was that riff rock? There's a lot of debate. Riff funk. Over. Riff funk. Okay, so this next one here's a challenge. Okay, it's just Nick and I. Nick's pretty good. It gets old though. You know, don't tell him I said that. Is there Standing any? Standing right here. It's fine. Listen, it, you do an okay job. Could we spice it up? Like, do you Absolutely. have something that could spice even our little thing up here? I think I have a solution for you okay. because I brought some loops with me. Okay. For my company that I started in 2017 called Sample Fuzz Audio. Okay. And it's just some extra little salsa, you know? We got some synths and some beats and just some stuff to kind of add. This is what we need here. On, on this little situation. Is, uh, Nick, is there a link in the description below for these? Yeah, right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing against you. I'm just really excited to play with like new, possibly better musicianship. No, that's fine, I get it. Yeah. So what's this next song? What are you using on the next song? Well, um, I heard that Nick really likes this band called Tame Impala, so I thought maybe we would do a little shout out, license friendly. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the wonderful Tame Impala. And for that, um, I think I'm gonna focus using the Morning Glory, just kind of grind it up a little bit. Okay. Nice little line maybe that focuses with, with that guy. And then, 
as this is always on, I'm gonna probably change the EQ just a tad, maybe, maybe push up 200 a little bit more and then a little less compression on this one. Okay. Blend in some of the, the dry signal. Okay, so. Sound good? Tame Impala-ish uh -huh. with your loop packs. Yep. I'm so excited. I'm, uh, I'm beside myself. <laughs> Changed the game. I enjoy music again, at least for today. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do we want to do next? Uh, Where are we going? Well, I was kind of playing with the idea in my head. What if Jimi Hendrix was in a shoegazer band? Like, what would that sound like? That's because I, I want to go there. I kind of have an idea where maybe the bass takes the lead and and focuses using this unicorn. Okay, so Univibe on bass. Like With that. some delay, maybe. Okay. Playing kind of like, I don't know, some Hendrixy kind of line, but as I'm, you know, just kind of getting emotional and okay. staring down at my shoes. So That's Hendrix, what shoegazer means, right? Yeah, Hendrix and a shoegazer band. Let's do it. Right now, man, I'm so bummed. <laughs> took me back to watching Sling Blade, the movie. Mm -hmm. Billy, Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's Hendrix and a shoegaze band. Anyway. It was pretty close. I missed the loops, though. Can we go Let's back? Let's bring them do, back. Can we do some more loops? Yeah. What do you want to do? Got some other one. Maybe we take it in the direction of my old band with Mute Math. Okay. Um, but maybe throw in some, I don't know, some talking heads. Talking math. What are you going to use? Probably Morning Glory, but with less drive. Probably a little bit more compression. And I won't touch the EQ. And just really get inside uh, this kind of Mute Math-esque um, groove, 16-note groove thing. And then I might, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll throw in some delay as well, because that was kind of a, a Mute Math thing as well. All right. Let's do it. I'm, I'm pumped for these loops.
this was a blast. Four jams. Mm, yeah. I think we covered a big spectrum of music, and I like your input on how you're just using guitar pedals here. Again, if you want like tons of nerdy info and a lot more conversation about the interaction of guitar, bass guitar with guitar pedals, bass pedals, the history, we did a live. It's two hours long. I mean, it's pretty in depth. It flies by though. Yeah, you can take a nap, wake up, finish it, whatever you want to do. It's really exciting. So let's talk about the board. Yeah. What do you want to do here? I think we should give it away. Let's give it away. You have to be a bass player. Absolutely. And if you're not, we will know. We have people Resources. who know everything. We have sources. In the description below, just click a link there. It's up for like 30 days or so. This is going to go to one lucky bass player, not a guitar player. It would work fine, I think, on It'd guitar. It'd be a killer, killer board But for we guitar, can't do but, that. Yeah. We can't do that. Also, your packs. Yeah, and the, the loops are at a, at a special uh, discount. So anyone watching, if you're interested in getting some, Check out the description below and check out the code. Uh, you wanna do a record time? I'd love to. Let's do record time. Today's record time is brought to you by Roy. And then I have one, but you go first. Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah. All right, so I chose Foo Fighters. It was a real, real, real good one. Um, I think probably just blew people's minds, right? Coming from Nirvana. so good. That there's like, oh my gosh, he's not only a great drummer, great songwriter, singer, mm -hmm. guitarist. So I wore this one out. Um, top three tracks for me are probably Monkey Wrench, My Hero, which I heard that Dave wrote for um, Kurt Cobain, and Everlong. I think I just played those over and I over. I love you... Walking After You because it's so different than like Foo Fighters. They're very rock and roll, but that yeah. Walking After You is such a beautiful, it's it like is a pretty beautiful. song. Yeah, totally. He's just a great songwriter. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, Dave. Mute Math, Odd Soul. I think I've shown this before. I'm showing it again because he's here and I'm bothering him. Go listen to this. The reason I picked this, this is such a great rock record. You know what I mean? It's riffs, it's riffs, it's the rhythm section. It's like this mixture of Led Zeppelin and the meters and all these, like the funk element, uh, Pratania, that whole song is, Amazing. I just think that like exemplifies your bass playing to me. There's so many good songs on here. Allies, Quarantine. Anyway, check this out as well. Any comments about this? How do you feel about this now? This is probably my favorite Mew Meth record that we made. You so played a lot of guitar on this. I played a lot of guitar and, and uh, it was a blast to make because there was just no limitations. We weren't worried about, you know, we took, we talked about a little bit how we probably lost some people from the previous yeah. sound, Mute Math yeah. sound, and took a risk here and gained a lot of others as well, uh, a lot of new fans. And anyway, it was just, it was kind of a liberating record for me. So yeah. I'm, I'm really, really pleased you well, like it. This is one of the best examples of playing classic rock, but not making it sound old and stale and boring and the same old thing. It's like fresh modern rock album, but all the roots are there and it's really cool. So good job. Thanks, man. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answered some questions. And remember, there is a really long open discussion, long format live episode where Roy and I go over the history of pedals, his rigs over the years, his recording and professional touring career, a lot of info for you bass players. and giving this away, so don't miss your chance. It's in the link in the description below. In the comments, I'd love to know what your favorite jam was, your favorite Mute Math song, your favorite thing about Roy, your favorite thing about bass guitar, any other questions you have, just lay it all out there. We'd love to hear from you and know more about what you're needing to know as bass players and what you liked about this episode, because we're trying. As guitar players, we're really, really trying. So hit like, subscribe to the channel, Click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Check out thejhsshow.com where there's like pointless shirts like this one, Earthy Midrange, because you might want Earthy Midrange. And then also you can join the JHS Show Patreon account. And I do history, long form talks, all kinds of super nerdy stuff. That's down there as well. Bye-bye.